Hi, Aiden. I'm Thalia. So, you're the pilgrim Albert told me is helping us rebuild humanity's library. I am. Albert's a wonderful man. I only hope others will appreciate what he's trying to do. We're not in the middle of the Renaissance, you know. Few people read. What about you? What about me? Do you read? <laughs> when I can. Not often. Then tell me what you think. Between the Bible and Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tales, which would you consider a better guide to human behavior? A fairy tales for sure. Doesn't have an agenda like some religious claptrap. Yes, but think of how the Bible has shaped the world around us. For good or ill, it's a powerful influence. I must speak to Albert now. Perhaps we'll talk again. Speaking of which, here are the locations of more books. Hello, Aiden. I see you've brought back a collection of Shakespeare's works for Albert. Are you familiar with Romeo and Juliet? I guess. Tell me, do you believe in love? I mean, true love. The faded love of which Shakespeare wrote. I don't. Not since I was a kid. And then I grew up. I see what you mean. But don't you even hold out some glimmer of hope? I can only hope to find my sister. It's all I got. Speaking to you, Aiden, has once again been a revelation. I look forward to your next visit. It's a welcome break for me. For you too, I hope. Here's a new list. Watch out for yourself. Say, Aiden, I haven't seen Albert this happy in forever. Thank you for what you're doing. Here's a list for your next book search. I've enjoyed our talks, but I tend to hog the conversation. Are there any questions you'd like to ask me? Well, actually, I am curious about something. Wonderful. What would you like to know? I get that you're romantic, but are you into subjects like science? An interesting question. Hopefully my answer will be worthy of it. You ask, though, as if they are entirely different ends of the spectrum. But to me, they are parallel notions. Whether it's science or romance, answers to questions are often best guesses based on what can be observed. With a different perspective, the same information leads to a different answer. For example, the sun was once a fiery god that, with better observational tools, was revealed to be but a fiery ball of gas. How do you feel about science? Especially given its role in our current mess. Science is just a tool, like a hammer. You can use it to build a shelter or bury it in someone's skull. A vivid but effective example. Hopefully we'll see more shelters and fewer of the other. Hurry back so we can speak some more. Of course. I'm looking forward to it. Aiden, it's such a wonderful day. Let's dispense with all this dreary philosophizing, shall we? <laughs> okay. I see you brought back the adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Tell me, Aiden, as a pilgrim, are you an adventurer like Huckleberry Finn? A pilgrim doesn't have the luxury of adventure, Thalia. I didn't mean anything by it, Aiden. I, I just thought... I thought what? That the real world is the same as some lazy adventure novel? I'm sorry, Aiden. That was insensitive of me. Yeah, I guess it's all you know, surrounded by books all the time. Me, I grew up surrounded by you. 
much more dangerous things. Of course, Aiden. Well, goodbye for now. Hopefully we'll be more in sync next time. Before you go. I wasn't sure I'd see you again. I'm sorry, Thalia. I, I was in a bad mood last time. Clearly. But since you've apologized, I forgive you. Water under the bridge, as they say. I see you brought Kafka's Metamorphosis. Albert's been after that particular book for a while. I'm sure Albert wax poetic about the theme of transformation and its parallels to the state of our world. A lot of wax, actually. <laughs> Two earfuls, at least. <laughs> That's Albert. But I'm curious what you think. Is the protagonist's transformation into a giant cockroach an apt parallel for what's going on in our world? Hey, don't tell Albert, but it doesn't really work for me. Oh? How so? I turn me into a roach any day over becoming an infected. I agree. I'm more apt to compare our world to Kafka's The Trial. We're all stuck in a maze of increasing danger and absurdity. There are authorities, but no accountability. No way to truly solve any problems. <laughs> Can't argue with that. Do you know? This might be a little out of turn, Aiden, but... I don't think I've ever been so aroused by a discussion of nihilism. I have to confess, Aiden. I was attracted to you the moment I laid eyes on you. So, if I come off a little thirsty, well, I am. But it's your mind, Aiden. You constantly surprise and delight me. You have a devastating combination of mind and body. I've said too much. I hope I didn't just drive you away. Please, Aiden, come back soon. You're self-confident, that much is obvious. But do you believe in anything outside of yourself? Bigger than yourself? I'd like to think so. But the world doesn't make believing very easy. Agreed. But we have to hope that all this suffering isn't for nothing. It'd be way fucked up if this was all for nothing. I see you're conflicted about this, but not despairing. That's something. I just don't want to see life as a constant struggle for nothing, I guess. I see. Thank you for sharing this with me. Oh, here. I have to go, but I have to tell you something first. What's that? But I know I don't always have the right words, but I do enjoy our talks. I'm glad. I do too. See you again. Soon, I hope. There you are, dear Aiden. I've missed you. Likewise, Thalia. Albert seems pleased with today's haul. H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds, huh? You know, every day I wonder. Are we at war? Well, who, us? Wait, did I say something wrong? Oh, Aiden, that was so cute. No, no, we're good. I was referring to the world around us. Is that in a state of war? Oh, right. The world. Oh, we're at war, all right, believe me. And not just one. A lot. Everyone seems to be at each other's throats for one reason or another. Sounds like you're talking about the infected. Some days, it's hard to tell who's more dangerous. The infected, the regular people. How distressing, Aiden. But quite an insight. Here's what you need. Till next time.
Yeah, till next time, Thalia. Aiden, I have a fresh list of book locations for you. Was that Alice's Adventures in Wonderland you brought back? Do you consider the library your wonderland now? I don't know about that, but it's a definite change of pace. I bet. I would imagine, like Alice's journeys, yours are disorienting. And you're probably surrounded by no small amount of madness. You seem immune to such afflictions. Seem, I say. But... But are you really, Aiden? Do you ever get close to losing it? Of course. I mean, we all have our moments, right? I know I do. Sometimes it's all I can do not to fling myself off the nearest balcony. I do that all the time. It's... it's kind of my job. But yeah, I get down sometimes. Then I just get over it. Now, I, I let myself feel bad, but I can't afford to wallow either. Stifling your feelings can be dangerous too, Aiden. Yeah, maybe. But that's just how I'm wired. And I'm off. I'll see you next time. <laughs> I'll be counting the hours. Ah, if it isn't my intellectual sparring partner. I see you brought Albert a copy of Plato's Republic. Petty stuff. I haven't read it, but Albert was sure excited. If it has pages, Albert's excited. But. Here's a question. If you had to make a choice, would you choose to be just or to be happy? If I had to choose, I'd be happy. We all deserve to be happy. I suppose, but at what cost? Could you disregard the pain and suffering around you and still be happy? You said choose one, so I did. You didn't say I had to be realistic. Albert's shelves are nearly full. I suppose you'll stop visiting soon. We'll just have to see about that. Well, at least there's one more location to check. Of the books you brought, On the Origin of Species and Treasure Island caught my eye and probably inspired a question. Indeed. So, how do you view yourself? Are you a pioneer like Darwin? Or a pirate like those found in Treasure Island? I don't know. Don't know enough about either to choose. Fair enough. I'm glad to hear you're not so self-absorbed. But... There's nothing wrong with a little role-play that leads to a bit of self-examination. I wonder if you're capable of that. On that note, it looks like I finished my work with Albert. Oh, so it means you won't be coming back? But yeah, I mean... As hard as it is to admit it, at least a part of me is really sad to hear it. The feelings I've read about, that's nothing compared to what I feel. I'll miss our conversations. Yeah, me too, Thalia. Do you think it's possible that I could see you again? Very possible. You can visit me at home, if you want. I've marked my flat on your map. I'll be there after the sunset. Okay, see you there. Till then, Aiden. It's Aiden. Come in. We have a nice place. Thanks. At least here you can pretend that this whole nightmare isn't happening outside. You know, I had a dream. What dream? That one morning, I, 
I went outside. There were people on the streets, kids playing, people in the cafes, like in the books I read. <sighs> Crazy, right? I think we all share that dream. Do you think if this world were different, would you get married, build a house? That seems unlikely. It's so detached from what my life is. My everyday life is in my imagination. In literature, I'm probably just a weak little girl to you. No. You're sensitive, but that doesn't mean you're weak. Those who are weak just give up. They stop caring about anything, give up on life. But you, you still care. It means you still fight. Someone told me once that only the gentle are ever really strong. Will you hold me, Aiden? Can we pretend that what's outside isn't happening just this one time? All right, Thalia. Just this one time. Were you just gonna slip out? Well, no, I, it's just that, you know. Monsters to fight, people to save. I've read those books. I'll, um, I'll see you later. Maybe you will. Maybe you won't. We both know the world we live in, after all. Didn't you say yours was the world of imagination? But not delusions. I'm glad this dream has come true. Likewise. I know. Goodbye, Aiden.